God bless you. Hope you're having a wonderful day today. My name is David, and it is Thursday, the last day of February, the 28th. And it's the last time I checked, it is still 2019. Now, my friends, after doing yesterday's video about modern-day charlatans, um, that's what I call them, I, uh... I thought that I would elaborate a little bit more because I think what we're seeing uh, with this Pope, especially after what he said yesterday, um, I think what we're seeing is without a doubt the most controversial Pope, at least in modern history. Um, the man just does not go by what the Bible says. Now, I'm going to tell you what he said. Was it yesterday or the day before? I can't quite remember. But he said, his words supersede the Bible. I'm going to let that sink into your gourd for just a second. Pope Francis' words supersede the Bible. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Whose words make up the Bible? Do you know? You should know. Whose words make up the Bible? God. God's words make up the Bible. Through the Spirit, He gave knowledge, what to write, to His apostles, to the writers of the Bible, all 66 books, from Paul to Timothy to Peter, he gave them through the Spirit what to write. These are God's words to man. Okay, I call the Bible our guidebook because it guides us through life how we should do our Christian walk. That's why I look at the Bible as a guidebook because it guides us through life. It really does. So how does this man of flesh and blood a man, a sinner, mind you, how does his word supersede that of God? Because when he says his word supersede the Bible, in essence, he's saying what he says is more important than God Almighty. Does the man have a complex or what? Now, I'm not here to smash Catholicism. I'm not here to bust on Catholics. That's not my purpose. Please do not think that, okay? Because that's not what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to do is open the eyes of people that don't know better or see this man as some type of, of godly figure that they bow down to, and they do trying to open their eyes and let them see that his words does not supersede God, that what he does is not the end all to beat all, okay? Now, I wrote down some beliefs. Now, I got these beliefs, mind you, off of their own site, okay? I've been to the Vatican a, a few times, actually, just as recent as 2018. And I told a story way back when I first started this channel, and I'm going to tell it again real quick. Uh, I was there uh, with my fiancé at the time, and we had went up to the top of a... I don't know what, what it's called. It was an old monastery. That's what it was. It was an old monastery where monks used to reside that were studying uh, to further, you know, themselves in, in, in the Catholic Church. I don't know how the hierarchy goes. I don't know if a monk turns into a priest or how that actually works. But anyways, they were there to study. So it was a monastery. And we went all the way up to the, to the roof. Now, this was right across from what they call uh, Vatican Square, okay, the, the big square, okay. And when we got up to the top after seeing the little things going up, 
I noticed, I, I told my, my fiance, I said, honey, look, look at that. There's thousands. There must have been, I, I don't know. I, I'm not good estimate with people and, and numbers, but there had to be 15, 20 plus thousand. I don't, there was a lot of people in this square. It was packed, packed to the, to the hilt. And they were buzzing. I mean, they, you could just tell this crowd was, you know, they had their flags and they were waving them. And I'm saying to her, I'm like, you know, what's going on now? She's not a Catholic. She, she don't know. She's from Italy. She didn't know. She's not from Rome, Milan, but um, which is way further north. Anyways, I digress. Uh, we stood there for a few minutes and I had brought a little small pair of binoculars, really, really nice binoculars to see sites, you know, just to see things. And I remembered I had them. So I took them out and I was looking and lo and behold, there was a, uh, I guess it was like a balcony. I'm really not sure what you call it. It had a, a railing thing around it and this window opens. Okay. And when that window opened, that crowd went absolutely bonkers, and lo and behold, there was the Pope. It was a Sunday. There was the Pope doing his little Pope wave, and then people, you would have thought, well, I don't know, you would have thought it was the, the best thing since sliced bread, since butter bread, since corn bread, since every type of bread that bread's ever been from the invention of bread. These people went absolutely Ballistic, bonkers, nuts, crazy, fanatical, whatever you want to call them. They went crazy like this man was was Jesus himself. I mean, I hate to say that, but that's they were just it's like it was a whole different experience. I've never never closest I've ever seen is when I was younger going to rock concerts when I wasn't in church and the crowd would go nuts when when the band first came out on stage and the crowd would go ballistic. It's sort of like that, but these people were just you know, the, the, the man, they, they treat this man like he's, I don't know. Anyways, I went there and let me read you some of the beliefs and I'm going to follow up a few of them with scripture. Uh, this is what he said. Now, this is the Pope speaking. Each of us has a vision of good and of evil. We have to encourage people to move towards what they think is good. Everyone has his own idea of good and evil and must choose to follow the good and fight evil as he conceives them. That would be enough to make the world a better place. Now, Isaiah 5.20 says, one of my favorite scriptures, it's, I call it my go-to scripture, especially for today. Woe unto them that call evil good, good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Uh, he goes on to say this, Since many of you do not belong to the Catholic Church and others are non-believers, from the bottom of my heart I give this silent blessing to each and every one of you, respecting the conscience of each one of you, but knowing that each one of you is a child of God. John 1, 12, but as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. From, this is the Pope again, from my point of view, God is the light that illuminates the darkness, even if it does not dissolve it, and a spark of divine light is within each of us. This is not, my friends, what the Bible says. To say that there is a spark of divine light within each of us smacks, completely smacks, it smells, it tastes, it emanates everything that is new age. This is new age hogwash, malarkey, baloney, whatever you want to call it. It just smacks of being new age. And this is what we get today. This is why the Pope said that, as I said in a couple videos, uh, Judaism, Christianity, Catholicism, and Islam all serve, all worship the same God. But we know that's not true. God clearly tells us that we're not to put any other gods before him. So how can we all worship the same God? It just, got to watch it, my friends. Uh, last thing. A person, this is Pope Francis, a person once asked me in a provocative manner, 
if I approved of homosexuality? I replied with another question. Tell me when God looks at a gay person, does he endorse the existence of this person with love or reject and condemn this person? We must always consider the person. Romans 1, 24-27 says the following, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator? And who is blessed forever? Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise also men, leaving the natural use of the women, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemingly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was met. Meet. Apologize. The last one I'm going to say that Pope Francis, this is his quote, I am always wary of decisions made hastily. I am always wary of the first decision. That is the first thing that comes to my mind if I have to make a decision. This is usually the wrong thing. I have to wait and assess, looking deep into myself, taking the necessary time. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6 says the following, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. The last one, if someone is gay and he searches for the Lord and has good will, who am I to judge? We shouldn't marginalize people for this. They must be integrated into society. He's talking about homosexuality once more. Proverbs 14.6, and I will finish on this. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. My friends, what we are seeing uh, is very very, very dangerous. We have a person that <sighs> oversees mass, mass, mass of millions, millions, millions upon millions of people. And they live on his every word. Okay? They literally live on this man's every word. When he says something, then it must be so. Well, what if he's saying something that doesn't go with God's word? That's the question I want to ask you. What if he says something like what I just read? And you know that it doesn't go with God's word. Now, is he right? Or is the Holy Bible right? It's a question I want to put to you. If you follow the Pope. If you're a Catholic and you've stumbled upon my video, I'm asking you this question. If the Pope says something and it's not, as I say, doesn't jive with the Word of God, then is the Word of God wrong and the Pope right? Or is it vice versa? Because I just gave you, what, four or five examples of things he said that were the opposite of what the Bible says. Now, this ain't something I'm making up. If you don't believe me, you can go right to the internet and find these exact quotes that the man said himself. I'm not going to put anything that's false on my channel. I'm not going to make up any fake stuff to make my point look more presentable or my belief more, you know, reasonable and better. There's only one way. I've never withheld that from anybody. There's only one way, my friends, and that's Jesus Christ. That's it. End of story. End of discussion. I got in a discussion this morning with a gentleman over this one of these very topics about, uh, he was saying that, um, again, as I said before about homosexuality, that, uh, you know, God loves them and we are not to, that Jesus said, we're, that he who hath not sinned pick up the first stone, or cast the first stone. And 
They love saying stuff like that, even though Jesus did say that, and that's true, but they also have to realize that as Christians, we are not to love the sin. We're to love the sinner, the person, and pray for that person, but we are to to have nothing to do with the sin. We are to pray for that person. He was also saying that Christians hate homosexuality or homosexuals, and I had to make the point that you're wrong. Jesus told us to love them, but to pray that they would discard to, 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 to come to him so he can cleanse them of that sin. We're not to hate the person, but we're to hate the sin. Sin is evil, my friend. Sin will send you straight to hell. That's as simple as that. So you have the Pope saying these statements that I've that I've read to you, which absolutely contradict the Bible. I put it to you again. I'm going to leave with this. If you're a Catholic and you've stumbled upon my video, you're welcome. Uh, God bless you. Um, I hope you enjoy the videos. But I want to ask a question. Who's right? The Pope or the Bible? Me? The Bible. 100% of the time. The Bible is God's Word. Man cannot supersede God. Man cannot supersede God's Word. No time no shape, no form. God says, do not add, do not take from his word. Do not. He clearly states it. Do not add to it, nor take from it. So, my friends, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, again, I don't mean any type of, you know, animosity towards Catholics. I'm just pointing out things that uh, I see that are not correct, especially, and you know me, I've told you from day one, if it is not in the Bible, then it is not the truth. It is not from the Word of God, period. It's To me, it's that simple. It really is. Take care of yourself. God bless, and I will see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.